Welcome to Down for Mobbing All Things Off Road Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Berg, and I'm joined by my co host, Chris Gaughan. We're both passionate about off roading and we're excited to share our knowledge and our experience with you. In this podcast, we'll be covering all things off road from news, events, to tips and tricks. We'll also be interviewing some of the biggest names in the off road industry. Whether you are a seasoned off-roader or just getting started, we have something for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. We're live. I don't think you have to yell. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can talk just now. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> We're just having a conversation. I feel like this is... <laughs> so uh, how'd that make you feel? <laughs> I can't do this. I can't fucking do this. What are we I talking mean, about? I don't even know the show notes, man. Uh, there's no show notes. We're just gonna fucking... We're gonna let it flow like... Niagara Falls. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, this podcast is sponsored by Athletic Brew, because I'm non-alcoholic drinker now. <laughs> You're drinking... Pizza Port. Pizza Port? Pretty good pizza, actually. Yeah. I like that place. Yeah. What's your favorite part about it? I don't know. Nice. Pizza, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Ask me a question. Just anything except for, for a hand job. <laughs> Can I get a blowy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. This is, there's children on this, dude. Oh. Okay. Um, so what are we talking about this week? Um, this week, we're live in the, what do we call DFM this? DFM Studios. The DFM Mobile Studios. <laughs> Soon to be my new home because <laughs> I'm, what unemployed. Happened? <laughs> I'm unemployed. <laughs> yeah, that still hurts. Yeah, so uh, why don't you uh, tell everybody a little bit about what happened? Um, I was in the locker room and <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I went through a gate and. I wasn't allowed to go through the gate. And a company that we shall not name um, didn't agree with that? or Yeah, they didn't agree with it, and there's... It's kind of messed up, but, uh, yeah. I wasn't supposed to go through it. I was never told I wasn't wasn't allowed in there, and I went through it, and then I came back out of it. And then it got left open, and then there's animals in that area, so it was like a liability thing. And, <clears throat> yeah, I am currently unemployed. But that's why we're going to start doing more more truck installs now. More more prep, more build. More, build? Do we call it builds? No, we're not building. We're just we're like bolt pushers. Assembling. <laughs> we're like bolt pushers. We just pull push old bolts out and new bolts in. Yeah, got to shank them bolts. It's not that easy, but <laughs> That's the plan, is to do start doing truck installs, trailer installs, race car prep, all things off-road podcast kind of stuff. Yeah. We want to, uh, I don't know, maybe go back and talk about when you used to do this, or like what makes you qualified to push bolts out. Sounds like a therapy session. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess so. I don't really ever talk about it, but uh, I used to prep trophy trucks, ultra four cars, and rock donkeys. Didn't you do, uh, like, pro lights, too? Yeah, pro lights, the like Haley Deegan, Brian Deegan's cars, um, Casey Curry's rock donkey, and his other vehicles that he has. Uh, some of the cantina, like, side work we did. We did some Baja Jerky stuff. Um, we... Towards the end of that whole career, I worked on Robbie Gordon's, like, old-school trophy truck, one of his first trucks that he built. Nice. Big old Robbie shocks on it. And uh, I learned a lot from doing that career, for sure, as far as, like, uh, proper bolts, bolt shanks. Yeah. That, uh, the Baja Jerky, was it Ross Rossler's truck? Yeah. Or? Nice. It was their pre-runner. Oh, cool. Yeah. I forgot what they called it, like, Rosie or something like that. Yeah. I forgot the name. But, yeah, it was an older truck. It had a lot of miles on it, but it was their uh, chase vehicle that, or their pre-runner for their uh, trophy truck or little buggy. Yeah. So for the people that don't know what a 
if you get Rossler's truck through the door, what uh, what kind of goes into a, a full prep on that one? Uh, that's uh, a lot of work. <laughs> Bring it in. The, the hardest part is washing it. Washing mm. everything without destroying all the components, like all the electronic stuff on it. Most of them are pretty, like, water resistant. I guess mm. you could say. Not waterproof, right? No, not waterproof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do not swim under the water. <laughs> <laughs> they don't swim with the fishies like in Crandon. Right. Um, yeah, so there's uh You'd bring it in. You'd wash it, take panels off, scrape all the mud off the panels. Kind of uh, check over everything, look for leaks. Like I've always said in all my videos on YouTube that I prefer to go over the truck when it's dirty still. Mm. Some people immediately wash their vehicle before they prep it. I what's just, the what's the benefit of doing it dirty? Um, you could see uh, like leaks a lot better because you could actually see like the dirt, like the oil will like run down and clean all the dirt off, and you could mm. actually see a leak a lot better versus if like a cooler's leaking and then you pressure wash around that area, not paying attention, you will completely clean everything off and you only know it's leaking. So yeah. then you go out there and potentially burn a car down. Well, seeps too. You'll see seeps when yeah. they're dirty, right? Yeah, and then like usually th with the dirt, there's corrosion, and it will start to like you could see cracks a little better, um, a little easier to see sometimes nice. for sure. Yeah. So then you would kind of bring the car in, um, strip it even further down, and start assessing, going over the chassis. You go like we would take uh, blue painters tape, mm -hmm. and then we anywhere we'd find cracks, we would kind of like put uh, tape around that area mm. to come back to later and then uh one of the fabricators would like grind it out weld it tape weld it whatever is necessary nice for that okay yeah and then uh you'd start pulling parts off washing them going through them rebuilding parts where uh where would you normally start like start suspension engine um i would start probably like i like to work from the outside in from like the hubs in gotcha yeah. so like kind of check the hubs uh check the like the play on them go through the brakes uh a lot of the the rotors will get rocks built up inside the actual fins of the rotor and I like yeah try to break those out because that will affect the cooling of it that sounds tedious yeah <laughs> yeah it's really good when you have uh some uh what's it called ocd mm, yeah. very meticulous work <laughs> Nice. All right. So you're <clears throat> chipping rocks out, looking at brakes. Yeah, checking pads. Uh, you could do that. It depends on the vehicle, but usually, like when they come back from Baja, like one thousands, we'd usually pull the uh, Willwood rotors apart and do a full prep, mm -hmm. rebuild on them, um, new seal kit, and then uh, kind of work our way in. Check Himes on the suspensions, pull the shocks off probably send those out after a Baja 1000 trip mm -hmm. and uh, just keep working our way in. Usually after Baja 1000, the truck is almost stripped completely. Yeah, down Over. the frame? Yeah. Or chassis, I should say? Yeah, chassis. Nice. And, uh... So, backtrack, I got a question. The trophy trucks that came through, were they running... Any of them running ceramic brakes or just all steel stuff? It was... They're ceramic stuff. It depends on, like, the budget. Yeah. Most of the guys ran, uh, like, um, I forgot what it's called. Hawk pads? I don't know what the material was made, though. Cause no, was... I, meant, I, I meant rotors. Like, oh, steel rotors? rotors or... Oh. Or anyone running ceramic rotors? I don't know. Uh -oh. I honestly don't know. I just asked, because today I learned uh, that you have to weigh ceramic rotors. Really? Yeah. Instead of mic them, like... With a caliper or whatever? Yeah, you weigh them, and once they get under a certain weight, you got to toss them. That's so much easier than taking because, the Because uh, the carbon dissipates out of the, as they heat up. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. I never would have thought to weigh, weigh rotors. No. Did you just have a little weed scale or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just go out to his car and grab his little weed scale. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway, so after that, you're checking Himes, checking shocks. Yeah. A lot of people will, like, uh, try to pull, like, if it's on uh, stands, they'll try to, like, shake the arms, and usually that's not enough force to actually, like, find the play in the Himes. Mm -hmm. So, I like, easiest way to check Himes, like, is probably when the truck's sitting on its own weight, 
uh, on all tires. Mm -hmm. and you could like shake the front bumper, and you could actually feel the clunk of the. Well, sometimes the clunk could be like ball joints, um, but usually most race cars are not ball joints. But like you could, you shake the car, and you could feel the like play in like the clunking. Of yeah. It. So, um, but. Well, the same way you check ball joint, or like at least what we do in the shop is we put the wheel like an inch or two off the ground and get a big pry bar. Yep. Just pry it up and down if there's yeah. any play. I forgot there's a reason or a name for that. Because they a lot of people do like the fucking this way and then like up and down, left and right. Well, left and right's going to check your uh, tie rod stuff. Tie rods, up and down's going to check your ball joints. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's not true because, like, I would always do that. I would just go shake it up and down, and I was like, oh, they're good, and then I took my ball joints off, and they are like, <laughs> flopping around. Rattling around? Yeah. 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 I'm excited to see what the new um, Napa ball joints I put in the Ranger are going to... Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can, like... There's been, like, good things said about them, right? Yeah, good things said about them for sure. Is between that and the... Um, Desolate Motorsports sells some that are orange boots, and uh, that's like was the two was to either go Napa or the Desolate ones. Uh, I think there's some green boot ones as well, but Napa's was probably the best comments and like ref there's the most positive feedback about those. Yeah, definitely need to get the truck out soon. Yes, I'm itching. Is to... it ready? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got a full alignment on it. I just yeah. finished the alignment on it. Uh, True Line Auto in uh, El Cajon did the alignment on it. Uh, super awesome guys over there. Ryan mm. and Matt were the dudes over there. Okay, Yeah, cool. super, like, asked them a million questions, and they were super, like, nice. Took the time to answer everything, which is cool, which I feel like a lot of shops don't do that. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, you got to get past the uh, the paywall on some shops yeah because it's like you know like you know how many like customers they probably get like asking them how to do an alignment on the off-road vehicle when they're like just bring it in like i don't know that's yeah. what's like selling points like they're willing to teach me over the phone i was i tried my hardest to align it but it turns out that the cam bushings that were in it were just incorrect cam bushings so no matter what i would have never got to the zero to negative two camber that i was trying to get out of the um out of the bushing little sleeves that they put in there. Yeah, but they figured it out, got it all square yeah, now. Dude, it looks really good sitting there. Like, yeah. like you can see some people have like really extreme camber, and um, ours is set at uh, negative two right now, so it should handle really well on the street. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers of everything. I have it on a piece of paper at my house, but they got the toes close as you can pretty much get it with swing steering. Nice. Yeah, so. I drove it down the little hot rod down the street, and when I picked it up, and it was uh, it pulls a little to the left, but that's because like uh, I would have to shorten or extend a tie rod. I can't remember, but for what it is well, in the dirt, it's not gonna matter. Yeah, the thing gets driven on the street like two percent of its time. Yeah, onto the trailer and off the trailer. <laughs> yeah, basically that's about it. And then onto my street. Yeah, for sure. All right, so. Well, back to the prep stuff. Back to the prep stuff. We covered hubs, brakes, Himes. Himes. Uh, next. What do you do when you pull off the shocks? <sighs> That's the pain in the ass. All right. Those are big and heavy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but usually we would um, on stuff like the Rock Donkey, like Ultra Four cars. Like everything is very narrow and everything is very tight and tall. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to get most shocks out of those cars. But like the Trophy Truck stuff is pretty simple usually. Um, you usually pull it out. You just, some of the older trucks they use one bolt to run both the coilover and the bypass together. Just like a spacer in between or something. Uh, yeah, spacer in between. Uh, some don't run a spacer at all. <laughs> but like, it's shitty to do that design because when you bend the bolt, then you're like, you because like if it's bent, then it's it has to still come through the other side. Right. So you're trying to bend or pull a bolt that's bent through. So another. I'm trying to picture this. Are there? four set or four tabs and one bolt going through yeah. all four yeah or is there spacers separating the shocks or how no it... because like if they're close enough the shocks and uh the coilover and the bypass sit close enough you can run one shock this is like old stuff yeah but a lot of newer stuff isn't like that but it's just like some older stuff like some pro light stuff you'd run a full length bolt through the whole entire spindle and occasionally that thing would be bent and it would be like a motherfucker to get it out. You'd have to like, 
uh, what's it like air hammer it out? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how far technology and trucks have <laughs> advanced. A little, little ingenuity goes a long way, huh? Yeah, right. So, um, next would be like pulling off components. Like most trophy truck dashes are really legit because they have a big canvas. Canvas? And they're, they're like uh, a big, like, uh, like aerocraft, aerospace, like uh, disconnect. Mm. So you're not having to like disconnect every single little wire behind the dash yeah. on the gauges and stuff. So that's pretty legit. You pull that out and then usually to clean that stuff, you just like spray simple green down on it and then you would take uh, compressed air and just blow the compressed air off it. Obviously being connect uh, careful right on the backside of like most like, um, I don't know, computers and stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't want to force dirt into them, but that's pretty much my trick now. Simple green and compressed air, huh? Yeah, it you know, works really well for like uh, bucket seats. Like, so you wouldn't use like contact cleaner or anything on the electronics, just simple green? Simple green, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, if it works, it works. Yeah, because like contact cleaner can sometimes like split. Um, well, I mean, if you use really good like uh, heat shrink, mm -hmm. you don't have that issue. But like some cheap heat probably shouldn't get off AutoZone. Or from AutoZone, like off Napa. No, not not to bag on AutoZone. <laughs> <laughs> AutoZone. <laughs> yeah, we use AutoZone. But yeah, the contact cleaner will split that stuff. Yeah, it can. Uh -huh. Well, it's funny because like. There's, I, when I was wiring the Ranger, I watched a lot of electrical stuff, like electrical videos on how to do stuff. And like, mm -hmm. they were showing a demonstration. They had AutoZone wire and then, uh, TXR wire, TXL wire, TXL wire. I'm really bad at remembering things. No, yeah, that's all right. Anyways, you pro wire USA. I don't know Spectrum. what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about wire. No, no, so if you most people will like run heat shrink through wire. The, my gist here is like you run heat shrink through wire on the wire. You heat it up, but you're actually melting the wire inside the heat shrink sleeve. Cause like uh, you want to use like TXL wire because TXL wire the um, has a better higher temp uh, like coating over the top of the wire mm -hmm. so it, it's like it does better with heat. oh so like the cheaper wire that uh... like if you were to put heat shrink over that wire from autozone you would heat gun it and you're actually melting the, the yeah the insulation on that wire yeah. versus txl wire is a lot stronger and takes heat a lot better and it actually won't melt gotcha so you're trying to protect your wire but really <laughs> all you're doing is melting your wires together right yeah so everything like that's kind of where I learned on the Ranger, like everything coming outside the vehicle, the firewall outside is all heat shrinked front to back. Everything's on a heat shrink mm. in heat shrink. So it's protected. And plus you don't see a bunch of like colored wires through the frame and stuff. It's yeah. really fucking ghetto. Um, so that's kind of something I learned, but there's also like downfalls of that because if you, <laughs> if, if you do, end up melting wire having any kind of electrical issues you have to tear all that uh, heat shrink back off so it can be harder to find your issue sometimes right 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 if you but, have a separated wire inside the heat shrink yeah uh, something like that or like if you had to butt connect it somewhere in between because your your line's too short or whatever mm -hmm. um and that like little butt connector breaks over time or whatever then you have to it's like kind of hard to figure that stuff out sometimes but you can run continuity tests between ends you know yeah See if it makes a connection or not. See, and you're like over here worried about diagnosing cars. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. Uh, you're going fine. from yeah prepping roller coasters to prepping and diagnosing cars and trucks. Yeah, yeah. that have a bunch of trash in them. Yeah, you're, you'll be fine. Yeah. Anyways, um... and then there's a lot of other things that were not race car related at that job. Like, uh, doing, working on big rigs, I had to like prep the big rig, uh, loading it for all the races, doing... Hey, if the trucks don't make it there, there's no race. That's right. <laughs> and they're putting a basic race car guy to prep a big rig. No clue what I was doing. Whatever. As long as it gets down the road. <laughs> it's a cat. There's a cat motor in it. Dude, my phone just turned on by itself. Wasn't it dead? Yeah. Oh, there it goes again. No. It's the, just the energy in here. Dude, it's just vibing. <laughs> <It's> vibing. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Um, right. So there was also a lot of like race trailer prep that I did because I was the lucky one that I got to go drive down to wherever the border to pick up trophy trucks and shit from mm-hmm. Mexico guys. And usually they would come back with like car tires on it on the trailer and like straps all loose. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, I'm the one that has to drive that thing eight hours back to San Luis Obispo. Well, that doesn't sound fun with someone else's trophy truck in the back. Yeah, right? And uh, so that was kind of something I just took on myself, started prepping all the other trailers that were coming in with trucks. Right. And uh, so I got a lot of, like, trailer diagnosing and repair experience through that. That's pretty cool. That was fun, easy shit. Yeah. That's something everyone looks at, like, overlooks, you know? Yeah, so those are the last thing people fucking touch. It's just a sled you pull by in your truck, that's all. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about doing uh, some prep for uh, certain trucks, maybe maybe some bolt-on stuff. Yeah, a lot of bolt-on, bolt-on boobs. I mean, bolt-on truck. <laughs> doing, oh, yeah. like, maybe we'll start, like, getting, uh, what's it called? Like, we'll just set up dealer accounts and stuff so we can <coughs> get pricing and stuff for people for like LSK, maybe suspension kind of installs doing total chaos stuff, you know, um, yeah. doing stuff like that really basic kind of bolt on stuff. We don't like, we're not going to like fabricate uppers and lowers to do stuff like that. Yeah. We'll do general like fab work that's needed, but for the most part, it's going to be just in like bolt on install suspension stuff. Bolt you on want- install prep yeah trailer stuff just stuff to get you the desert and back yeah is the goal right now so we've been putting out feelers on the instagram and uh, people have interests on it so i think it's going to be something that's going to be fun and it's going to be a lot better than waking up at four in the morning and building someone else's dream does that sound a little salty i'm still well, a, little, yeah, I'm a little salty well licking your wound still there eh? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's okay though that's all right. I'm allowed to cry. All right. So, well, what else is going on with DFM? What uh, else we got DFM in the works? is possibly coming to Hesperia, California, Ooh. USA. Yeah, just getting a little step closer to the desert. I meant, what else, like, we were talking about uh, planning a run. Oh. Maybe. I mean, it might be put off a little bit right yeah, now. Yeah, it might be able to put off a little bit. Since... But anyways, we could still tell people about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could tell people about it. If you people really want to know about it, they can get up on uh, Bad Lines, Good Times uh, forum page. And mm-hmm. There's a full breakdown on everything and info on that. So people should actually go there. Join the forum. First of all, join the forum. Mm-hmm. Check out all of the stuff we do because all of our events are listed on there. Everything that we do, we, I, that's the first place it pretty much goes. Right. Actually, it goes to Instagram, put out a little feeler, see what people think. And then if it's something that we can actually do and we actually, like, want to do it. Try we, to get it set up on yeah. the forum. We had, make sure there's, we just put out fillers, basically. There's a lot of people interested in it, but it's, like, 820 miles starting from Yuma, Arizona, going all the way to Benton. Bentonville? Benton Hot Is it, Springs. Is it Bentonville? Oh, I don't know. It's up there. It's yeah. past, past Bishop. Yeah, past Bishop. So it's 820 miles. Uh, I don't know if it's the halfway point, but we'd be stopping in Prim, Nevada during Battle at Prim. Right. So we'd start in Yuma probably on like a Wednesday. And our like halfway point would be Prim. Prim. Which watch probably, the race a little bit. Watch the race. We'll probably get a hotel. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Because like you're going to think we're going from uh, Yuma, Arizona all the way to... Prim, Nevada, with no showers. I mean, we're all men, so yeah. we just pee on each other, wash each other off. <laughs> a little wet work. You know, <laughs> a little fucking wet work. We'll squirt down with water bottles. A little Anyways, Kelly. maybe we will stop at the, the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. I think it'd be ideal to get some, like, at maybe least... stop maybe at the tree bar a little bit. Tree bar a little bit. I'll get my non-alcoholic beers. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that's all right. It's only slightly depressing. It's sad that I'm spending money. Well, that was my money, but yeah. Well, I'm spending... Well, money's being spent to drink alcohol that doesn't have any alcohol in it. Yeah, you're right. But if Athletic Brew wants to sponsor fucking... A guy that's just floating around unemployed. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. You're probably not going to get a pizza sponsor. No, but just flow those... 
free beers over <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. 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 And there's like 5.5% 5. 5 alcohol in here, I think. No, there's not. <laughs> That's sad. It tastes like alcohol. Let me do a little taste test. Just open your mouth. <laughs> I'm good. I'll baby bird it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Is this supposed to be PG? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. Whatever. All right. So prep work, check. Prep work. Um, fucking down from mopping run, check. Yeah, but what else? Well, I think I want to talk more about the run. All right, let's talk about so, it. So, um, usually adventure bikes are doing it, right? Yeah, because it's uh, the backcountry discovery route. Yeah, they're the PDR. ones that originally kind of run this and plan this. Yeah, but from what we've seen, it's mostly. Mostly fire roads and yeah. kind of back back roads sort of yeah. deal. So it's not totally tuned to pre-runners. Yeah. It's mainly fire roads. It's really going to be a test of components and like fittings more than big shock stuff like Logan said. That's yeah. Like, it's more, it's all about the adventure. Yeah, it's about adventure and explore. And how 100%. well you can keep your truck together because uh, if you bring it to down for mobbing prep, it's going to take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I don't know, hopefully. Yeah, that's okay. No guarantees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the issue that, like, we're squirreling a little bit here, but, like, DFM has always, like, had this goal, but it's never been a set goal. And, like, every time we grow, we kind of divert, and then we grow a little more, and we go this way, and then we go that way. But, like, this has probably been our most, uh, like, for sure kind of plan, you know? Trying to do, I don't even know what, we, what we're going to call it, DFM Motorsports. <laughs> I don't like. No, we're not not yeah. a motorsports. No, we're not a not a team. We're not. We'll just you know put your shit together. What right if we had and... a, a club community? It'd be like a clubhouse. They're not hanging out at my house. Well, they're hanging out at the shop. Oh yeah, okay. We'll get like a fucking pool table. Maybe some athletic beer pong games for the sober people. There we go. All right. Well, let's go back. We're real back, real back. <laughs> Bring it back in. Bring it real back in. All right. Um, well, what else is uh, in the future looking towards working on? Um, Any new merch? Yeah, there's. we have three designs coming out, uh, three new designs. Uh, they're going to be coming out. I don't know. Things are kind of up in the air currently because I'm uh, maybe moving, maybe not moving. I'm definitely unemployed. Looking yeah. for work. But we have some new designs in the works. Things are things are in the works. We got a lot of things. We got hat designs, we got shirt designs. It's just a matter of like putting it together. Yeah. We're a self funded both of us out of our own jobs that I used to have. <laughs> <laughs> so things might, things are a little little weird right now, you know. We don't have big money coming in, so Yeah. But yeah, we're not giving stuff away for free, that's for sure. You gotta buy it. Well, I need money for that beanie then. <laughs> that beanie wasn't free, Chris. Anyways. Um, was that a shameless plug? Yeah. We're just plugging ourselves. So <laughs> oh, we have new merch. We do have new merch. We have new merch. Like this? That beanie. Yeah, that beanie. Um, we have our Desert Dust Surf Fast designs. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Sick shirt. Sick shirt. What if down from mobbing Desert Dust Surf Fast Suspension shop. <laughs> dot com dot org dot se. <laughs> See how long we can make this yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, man, we're really squirreling here. Yeah, but it's all good. It's it's what it's like trying to, uh, you know, have a small business on the side and. Yeah, but stuff is not easy. No, it's it's a lot of squirrel moments because you know working full time trying to do this and trying to get out on the weekends trying to promote it but it's trying to have a truck ready it's been summer. around you know we've been around it's, yeah it's I think going it, i think it's at a good point to where like people are like they know the truck um people know the name it sounds like i'm tooting my own horn here but it's cool when you hear people talk about like they're stoked to see the new apparel that we're doing i don't know it feels like we're finally going it's going somewhere mm -hmm. i think Going to San Diego was a big move for DFM. It really, like, kind of connected the scene with the name. You know, I was able to do, like... The pre-runner island. Pre-runner island stuff. You Like, you and I were doing all the other events. Um, 
it was just like I don't know feel like we're all friends on Instagram and then when you can finally meet that, those people in person it like really connects everything together yeah definitely stokes people out yeah she doesn't want to catfish well I mean you might be but yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit yeah that's like sh- yeah but it's uh, a filter that's all that is it's a filter <laughs> It's a, the filter's called no filter filter. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I think this new adventure with uh, truck install stuff, prep stuff. I mean, it's in our history. You are uh, you service right for a living, so take your money. That's yeah. what I do. You you do service work. <laughs> I do mechanic stuff. So I think together we can do pretty good. Maybe bring in a fabrication guy and then like a a third member, like kind of axle guy. Mm-hmm. And then pretty, pretty much being Hesperia ideally would be our location close to the desert. You know, when you prep someone's shit, we make, we figure out a little trail that we could do test runs on. Mm-hmm. Like Bomber Fab does that. He'll yeah. uh, build trucks and then he'll like. RJ Fab's always posting in Honda Valley. There's, you know. Plenty of stuff up here. Yeah. Close to, uh, you know, close to the spots, close close enough to where there's, uh, you know, if we need to take your truck out for, you know, tuning with Fox or King, right here. Yeah. So. We have a lot of connections in the industry, too, so if parts are hard to get, we can get them. You know, if we're doing shock service, most of that will probably go through ideally we'd push that through like down south motorsports mm-hmm. sunny and and the team there so yep yeah so. i think that's a pretty big venture but i think uh yeah. i think it's something that we're both really good at and we can provide pretty good service for people and keep some trucks out in the desert yeah i think that's like it's hard because a lot of guys don't have time to prep their stuff and like it's something that i actually enjoy like the amount of prep that I put into the Ranger is overkill for what it is. Like, every single time it goes to the desert, it goes to the same prep every single time, no matter if I'm doing 5 miles, 10 miles, it still gets a prep, nut and bolt check, mm-hmm. crack check. Like, I just magged all the suspension on the truck, which is overkill for something like my Ranger, you know? It's mm-hmm. not raced, but, like, it's a good peace of mind to have that done. Yep. I, like, most of the race trucks, trophy trucks, we were doing that every single race, but, like, for this... It's like I do every couple of years, so I think I'd be happy with that. That's, yeah, that's another good thing to point out is just disassembly and reassembly so that those other services can be done yeah. and your truck's not scattered in your, your own garage or yeah. your driveway. Like, we can take it apart, we could drop it off, have everything, you know, sandblasted, magged, then powder coated and or painted. Or painted and put VHT back together. Paint. VHT, <laughs> yeah, and put back together for you. Yeah, so and maybe even offering like pickup and delivery, you know. We do have that. Yeah, we have a guy that can like cross country pick up stuff and deliver stuff as well. So. Yep. Definitely, and definitely versatile. Are we still gonna do the media stuff for races and race teams? Yeah, I mean, I think for what we can get out there, um, we will. Um, I think for the most part, it'll just be us trying to enjoy our time at the race. But if yeah. you do, if you are looking for some like, um, you know, more, <clears throat> more personal coverage, more pit support or pit support, um, definitely available, you know, just hit, hit us up in the DMS and, yeah. and let us know what you're looking for. It means we need I a mean, website. we're also the you know, the desert's fastest media company, so we can keep up and film you, so. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude, we need a shirt that says that. We were going to make that one, right? Yeah. With uh, us, like, hanging out of the window, the ranger with the yeah. camera and all that. Cam- yeah, that'd be a sick shirt, but you'd probably piss a lot of the the actual media teams that make money out there. Yeah, whatever. We're grassroots, homemade. Code word for poor. <laughs> yeah. we're fucking wannabe some of us are unemployed <laughs> some of us might not have a house might be living in the home studio here <laughs> but, well it's all about getting out there and doing what we love and 
providing for the community and yeah, the you know, thing is bringing community. people in and making it happen. So yeah, I think uh, and we'll still be doing all of our normal stuff, attending events, doing um, uh, still we got to start planning for uh, the next um, pre runner island event. Yeah, the, we have a lot of events to plan this year. Yeah, it'll be easier though that we're fucking not far, four hours away from each other. Yeah, you know, losing phone calls reception as you go up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think definitely that, and then there's one other thing on the ticket that may or may not happen this year. What's that? The Ranger actually racing a race. Oh. Why do I keep promising things? <laughs> yeah. 820-mile <laughs> run, racing. Hey. You know, if we get, like... If we get racing motorsports? Yeah. <laughs> if we get two out of three, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, f- fuck it. Two out of four. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if we just... Oh, I have a lot more time on my hands. <laughs> so, either we're going to start doing some shit, or people are going to get a lot of ads. Yeah. <laughs> buy my clothes. Buy the clothes. <laughs> I mean, if you buy the, if you support the channel, you know, you don't have to buy clothes to support DFN. You can give either just, one of us just a say fucking it. high five. Just say it. I just want a fucking high five in the public, dude. I, I thought want... you were going to go like, comment, share, subscribe. No. Walk up, smack Yo. my ass, and say, what's up, dude? You know? But don't touch my ass. It's off limits. Unless you're a hot chick. No. I'm giving you full permission. Get, the, get his ass. Oh, God, what are we starting? <laughs> There's children here. There might be kids watch, listening and watching. And it's not okay. Forget what you what you heard. Plug your ears. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, all right. I think that's about it. What the fuck? I'm not done. <laughs> oh, sorry. Dude, I've been trapped in my house alone, not working, dude. I got to get it out. What else we got going on? I don't know, man. Ask me a question. <laughs> nah, I'll just go with one. It's fine. How does it make you feel? <laughs> this this uh, podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. <laughs> now they owe us money. <laughs> or we owe them money. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. We probably might. Maybe we need to contact them. We need group therapy. We need to uh, contact our lawyers now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> Um, I can't believe you're just trying to end the podcast like that. Oh, sorry. Well, this shit's gonna. We're gonna Joe Rogan this shit. It's gonna be an hour. How long have we got here? Thirty-eight minutes. God, I was so close. No, we need at least an hour and forty minutes. There's nobody here but us, but my social anxiety is climbing. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Drink some alcohol. Yeah, I probably should. I'll just uh, keep talking if you want to go get more beer. What do you want to talk about? Ask me how I feel. <laughs> um, the Ranger got a new. When do you bumper. feel most vulnerable? <laughs> when you ask me questions like that. <laughs> the Ranger did get a new bumper. It did. So that y'all can nerf him. <laughs> Great, thanks. Uh, we will be attending King of the Hammers. Yes, we will be there. See, none of these fingers. So that you guys can nerf him. <laughs> none of these fingers are pointing back at me, so you're showing up. Yeah. Because I live here now. In front of your house. <laughs> in my camper. It's all good. We'll be there. Um, maybe we'll convince some other guys to roll out. Uh, all American Sender and I have already planned a date. Not like that, but like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna explore. All right. We're gonna try to find some shit, some new bumps and jumps to hit. Everyone's... I don't know. Last year that uh, the dune jump was pretty good. Dude, but that thing is so boring. That's not boring. Okay, I'm a little. Oh, bitch. because you kept landing on the fucking crown. So I just didn't have enough pedal. Yeah. We bit more pedal. <laughs> I didn't have any more pedal. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe the new nerf bar will help me float it better. Yeah. Dude, that nerf bar. It's all about balance. That thing. Dan and Austin, the guys that I worked in the race shop with, we bent that thing up the last night I was like moving to San Diego and, uh, I was like literally loaded up, ready to leave, and I was like, D- "I need a, I need a Nerf bar," because like the tires stick out and like. So that thing got bent up, notched, and then it sat in my garage for 
almost three years. And so I finally got some time to be able to finish it. How are your welds? They're pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. On the outside? <laughs> pretty good. Just so I don't take the panels off. <laughs> no, they're pretty good. Um, the panel work, though, not so great. I bought... Yeah, I saw... What you, you ended up putting them on the inside? or Yeah, in the inside, and then someone's like, dude, all panels go on the outside of the tubing. And I was like, I know that. But how do you do that <laughs> with that? So, like, I was looking at other two bumper setups, and the way that the, the like, down bars come, that I should have kicked them, like, they're... I was thinking maybe directly centered is where the tube should come up and meet the actual, like, nerf bar mm -hmm. to help with the support of it. Some guys will run, like, a small tube across, and then they're up... The like, down bars are at the ends more. So your panel is a lot more, like, triangly. So my panel was like triangling the center, and then it had to have this gnarly bend and curve to get the like, conk, like the curve of the, of the Nerf bar. Mm -hmm. My abilities don't allow that. <laughs> I don't have the tooling for that. So the easiest thing for me to do was I made like two different templates. Like some templates would sleeve over the tube and just looked weird. Mm -hmm. So then I scratched that idea, and then I ended up just putting the the plates on or the paneling on the inside of the tubing, which will like save it. <laughs> In the long run, but it's just not, like, it's not the style that you're supposed to, it's not, like, proper etiquette, I guess. Um. So, for now. So, is there a way to put the paneling on the outside? Well, because you don't want the paneling on the outside. Well, if I have, if like, you do get hit. Yeah, so, like, that's the thing, but, like, are, are we actually going to race? I thought we were. How much money do you have for a race suit? It's already there. <laughs> okay, some of us have to buy a race suit. We can't borrow them, okay? No, you you talked me out of the arms for the Tahoe, so now there's money for racing. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, I don't have any money. Yeah, shout out to LSK. Jason talked me out of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Blame me for that, huh? Are we still recording over there? I don't know. Oh, we need camera check. Start talking to the microphone. Uh, mic check, mic check. We're doing camera checks. Oh, man. Uh, camera died. We don't have a podcast. <laughs> so there might be a lot of cuts in this. Uh, no, we're, we're just gonna we're gonna let it fucking sing from the top. I don't like that. Fat lady's gonna sing from the top. And then uh did I tell you got a new bumper? We already we, talked about that. We already right? talked oh, about okay. that, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think the non alcoholic beer <laughs> is affecting you more than the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is this one? Yeah, these are vegan though, by these the way. These are eight percent. These are vegan. You're a vegan. <laughs> Saving Help. the trees. Wait. Animals? <laughs> oh, fuck. Now we're going to get haters. We're going to get fucking... Contradicting. It's all good. We're going to get... Uh, Fitting right in. What's it called? We're going to get hated. What's the popular word they use now? Canceled? It's canceled. <laughs> Cancel us, bitch. Try. <laughs> we'll start a new name. Well, dude, just don't Google our name. <laughs> that was a bad you name know? choice. It's uh, pretty open at work. Like, I... I don't really have like a dress code or anything, Out of the closet? even though uh, I work at a dealership. But anyways, I wear down from mobbing stuff to work all the time, and uh, you know the older customers are like, "What's down for mobbing?" Oh and then I have God. to explain to these like these old people what a pre runner is, and yeah, yeah. Found to go to the new shop. Yeah, there we go. Go buy a Jeep from you. <laughs> take it to our shop, and we'll fucking do it up. No, tell them to buy a Ford Raptor. Yeah, and we'll just we'll just bolt on the shit out of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> the truck or the customer? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're getting canceled for sure. Hundred percent, we're getting canceled. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, there's old people. <laughs> <laughs> They're bolt ons. <laughs> They're bolt ons. <laughs> <laughs> we're what are we talking about Dude, anymore? Is anybody even gonna listen to this? We'll find out, I guess. How do we even know it's recording? I don't know. Small business stuff, dude. We should I mean, probably... Is my light on? <laughs> yeah, your light, yeah, your mic's on. Alright. I feel drunk. <laughs> is that just me being awkward? <laughs> this is like a first date. I feel awkward. That's right. I'll make you comfortable, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And that's the last thing I remember. <laughs> Uh, laughing too much. Um, I don't know, man. We're just, 
We're just, you Spend know. It. We have no direction, just yeah. like the company. Yeah. But now it does. Now it's got direction. Now it has direction, as long as you trust us with your truck. <laughs> I don't know. You no, don't sound very assuring. Huh? You don't sound very assuring. Sell it to the customers, Chris. You're going to be... Have you ever seen the, the TV show uh, Gotham Garage? No. But anyway, so if oh. you're... <laughs> Fuck my fucking conversation. You're out in the desert, right? You're enjoying time with your family, your homies. You're fucking hitting the whoops, fucking sliding the thing around. You get, like, you get this wild hair up your butt, and you're like, let's go way out to that mine 40 miles away in the dirt. You get out there, and your shit breaks. And you're like, fuck. I wish I had someone prep my truck because I could have saved this fucking bolt. Man, if only Did I sell shop. it? Was that it? No, you didn't. you're supposed to sell the pen, not the truck. Oh, no, I sold the bolt. Oh, okay. What kind of bolt? A broken oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> nice of you. What was the story behind that? Shanker oh. bolts? Yeah, basically. Have us shank your bolts. Yeah. I'll shank your bolts. <laughs> Christ. Maybe we should end this podcast. <laughs> uh, I told you cut a long time ago, but they were here we really, are. Yeah. People are if people are still listening. I'm gonna send them a free shirt. <laughs> Except for I'm not because I can't afford to do that. <laughs> Sorry. So how's your beer? <laughs> it's uh yeah. Pretty good. Dude, PRP is sending us some harnesses. Well, they're not, it's not like they're free, but I ordered some. So now we have to go racing. Because that expression, expiration date. <laughs> expiration date? <laughs> is going to go out pretty soon, pretty quick. On the new ones or on the old ones? Uh, The new ones that I just ordered. Oh. How yeah. long is that expiration date on? I have no clue. <laughs> Why did you say pretty quick? I don't All right, know. anyways, but yeah, we It'll do. It'll go by quick. Me moving, setting up a shop, hopefully not both of us standing in the driveway of the shop with no customers. Mm -hmm. You trying to sell a broken bolt to people. <laughs> Our dog's running amok. Yeah. Me slamming non-alcoholic beers, <laughs> waiting to get drunk. Yep. Yep. Got a bright future. Yeah. Sobriety's good. Yeah? It's working for you? Yeah. I don't think I want to talk about it, though. <laughs> okay, we'll just... No, nah, maybe we will. <laughs> you tell me, buddy. You want to talk about it? Um, I didn't die or, like, kill anyone, so that's good. Everyone, when I tell them I'm, like, sober now, they're like, how many people did you run over? Do I look <laughs> like I drive a fucking Mustang? <laughs> I mean, you still drive a Ford, but... It's Chevy-powered. Yeah, that's true. So it'll, it'll just... What's that try. saying? Uh, Ford... Built, built Ford, tough, Chevy... Powered? I have no idea. Ran the daughter, dodged the father. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Crickets. So, where? So, some advantages of moving DFM from San Diego to Hesperia, closer to to uh, the desert. We already talked about this. Oh, I think yeah. the podcast done. Is it? Yeah, I think it's done. All right. Well, what are you gonna? Do? What are you gonna but you can use that that last bit for like B roll. Like maybe you can work it into the intro. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't know what you mean. What part about that? The whole awkwardness that we've been having. Yeah, just like maybe the it's... uncomfortable jokes, and then you just roll into the podcast. No, I'm just gonna let this thing roll. I'm not gonna cut anything. Special guest is gonna make it and everything. <laughs> You hitting the vape, it's going to make it. Me, over here, stuffed like a little fucking pig in a blanket. All right, well, in that case... Um, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm going to go home. No, dude. Have you listened to Bobby Lee, the Bob Lee and uh, Friends? No. Bad Friends? No. Oh. Oh. supposed to support people, dude. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you did buy me this supporting my soberness. Mm -hmm. All right, let's end it. Where can people reach you? Reach me? I don't know. I guess me. Just, just go on. Wait, down us. for mobbing. At down for mobbing. Dot org. No, at 
Down for mobbing? Dot com? <laughs> Instagram. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, or com. Is that, like, what, with a four or a F-O-R? Is that dot org? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really Listen. sound with it. <laughs> Really sound here. All right, <laughs> go down from mommy dot com dot org dot s t u m p. There's no go found me's here. <laughs> oh, dude, only the old school people will know that one. Yeah, that one still hurts. It's all right. All right, go to down from mommy dot com or add down from mommy on Instagram or down from mommy on YouTube or dfm media one at gmail dot com or subscribe on Spotify. This is going to be on Spotify. Some of YouTube will be on. <laughs> it might be a little, little blank on YouTube. Yeah. Whatever. You can just edit over like trucks yeah. jumping. And then we'll be like, this commercial is sponsored by Athletic Brew. What if it? What if the algorithm picks that up and just throws it in there? That would be so clutch. We're going to do a Secchi's commercial, <laughs> like, commercial before it. <laughs> like before the podcast starts. Yeah. It's a Dos Equis commercial and then... What if we start a new brand, new sober beer brand? We lose all our followers. Probably. So beer brand. <laughs> so, that's pretty good. I like that. So beer. And then we'll just like throw beers out the window at people. <laughs> Dude, when I went to Crandon, that happened. They were throwing <laughs> fucking Bud Lights at people. Everyone turned to, uh, oh, wait, we probably should make jokes like that. Yeah, anyways. They were throwing like candy at people. Yeah. Crandon's wild, man. Wait, were we supposed to end this podcast? Yeah. Oh. That's it. We're out. Wait. Good night. Wait. You didn't tell me when to buy clothes. Support the brand. Support my homelessness. Uh, that's you, buddy. Oh. Well, you're, you're the selling person. Your job is to be in... Buy in... clothes or don't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, see you guys. Are we done? I mean, yeah. I'll keep going. No, we're oh, done. Okay. Close. <laughs> we're at 53 minutes. We're so close. We're just... Guy hit 60. All right. Bye, guys.